Hi, my name is Anna G, and I am from the coastal Los Angeles region of the LA Church of Christ. And my husband, Dick G, is one of the elders in this region, and we have two awesome daughters, Caitlin and Rachel. And um, I know that in the past couple of months that we have been in quarantine, and just like you, I have felt every single emotion under the sun. Uh, but the greatest thing is that I have come to realize that there's only one thing certain, and that is our Father God. And, um, you know, the, the, the only God, heaven, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are certain. Hell is certain. Spiritual things are certain. Fame, fortune, even family, they are uncertain. Uh, but God remains certain. And I'm so thankful for that. And that's why I want to talk today about the conduit that connects us with God, and that is prayer. Uh, but not simply prayer, but persistent prayer and why it is so vital. In Luke 18, 35 through 43, we, um, and we know about the case of uh, Bartimaeus, the man Bartimaeus, and how he was blind and he heard he was sitting there and he heard this crowd walking by and so he asked the people around him what what's going on and someone shared with him the good news that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by and so he called out now he called out not just stated he he, he cried out to Jesus have mercy on me and when he was shushed rebuked and told to be quiet uh, by the crowd, uh, he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And all the more we need to cry out to our Lord if someone shushes us, uh, so to speak, about the desires of our heart. Jesus heard him and stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. I love how Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do? to do for you and the man replies rabbi I want to see and Jesus responded with go your faith has healed you now Bartimaeus persistence um, worked where I, I believe the half-hearted indifference would have failed we need persistent audacious cries and prayers to God. We need to ask, seek, and knock. Ian e. Bow states that in his book of prayer, um, states in his book of prayer that what awaits our persistent and insistent prayers is our Father's heart, our Father's hand, our Father's infinite power, and our Father's infinite willingness to hear and give to us his children. I love that. And that encourages me and emboldens me more to pray to God and to pray to God with persistent and audacious prayers. Ask, seek, and knock. Jesus urges um, the necessity of persistent in prayers. Asking, seeking, and knocking are these rounds in the ladder of, of prayer. We must give God, Jesus, no peace uh, no rest until he grants us an answer. Dick and I, we pray together daily. And um, this has helped us grow in every area of our lives. But there are times when we undergo hard or difficult times or uncertain times. And um, our prayers are not just consistent, but they become persistent and insistent. And... Um, and audacious. We want answers from God. And a few years back, we were both uh, faced uh, with, you know, with with a fork in the road, so to speak, in both of our careers. And so we we implored God. We start praying. And as the days were on with no answer, and the weeks were on with no clear answer, and the months wore on, finally, God answered with succinct certainty of which way we both should go. 
in our careers. I mean, pretty much at the same time, we both got our answers. He closed some doors and he opened some windows, so to speak, and and he, he made it obvious which path to take. It was quite amazing. And we look back at that time with just fond, fond memories. And uh, it was some of the most character and faith building times in our lives. And we received this deeper connection to God. Now, the necessity of persistent prayer is plainly set forth by the word of God, in the word of God. I mean, we obviously know the persistent widow. We know about Hannah. We know about the guy we just talked about, blind Bartimaeus. Um, and so it needs to be, persistent prayer needs to be, the importance of persistent prayer needs to be stated and restated. We often overlook this truth. Our love of shortcuts, uh, our love of quick answers, our love of ease, our love of the 5G internet speed, it goes against this type of petitioning. In Luke 18, 8, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Unanswered prayers test our faith. And we will meet that test when we keep praying and don't lose heart despite our disappointments and uh, frustrations. I've realized, I've come to realize that persistence is for our sake, not so much for God's. Uh, if we got exactly what we wanted the very first time we prayed or asked for, for it for, and we got it from God, we would start treating God like a genie. Um, persistent prayers help us to define what is it that we really want. Um, persistence deepens our relationship with God. It sifts our hearts to examine what it really wants. And uh, do, do you want God's will? Uh, do you want God even more than the very things that you are asking, even if those things were good things? If the answer to those two questions is no, then should God or would God really want to answer that prayer? Persistence, though, is the breeding ground of spiritual growth and health. Persistence molds and transforms our hearts, um, our desires. It changes how we pray, what we are praying for, so that gradually we come to praying closer to the heart of God's will. When God didn't answer the Apostle Paul, Paul's prayer to remove the thorn in his flesh, Paul pivoted, like he moved. And he prayed that God would help him rely on God's grace, strength, and power, which was made perfect in Paul's weakness. Great, a great quote from a guy named Henry Nguyen. Uh, he's a, a priest and a professor. He says, you must be patient until your hands are completely open. Think about that. Yes, it, it means that Pray until we are completely and ultimately surrendered. And let's pray with persistence until God answers with a yes, a no, or a not now. I actually feel the answer isn't as important in so much as how it will etch more depth in our character and how it will tightly weave our hearts more to God's heart. When that happens, Isaiah 45, 3 happens. It's a hidden treasure stored in secret places that only you and God really know between the two of you. Thank you.